As part of an ongoing effort to monitor and combat insecticide resistance, the Vector Control Unit of the Environmental Health Division conducted an in-depth review and evaluation during a follow-up visit. This initiative is crucial to understanding and addressing the operational challenges faced in the implementation of the insecticide resistance testing. The follow-up visit involved comprehensive discussions with the vector control team, focusing on identifying and overcoming the barriers encountered during the testing process. The aim was to refine strategies and improve the effectiveness of the testing protocols to better control vector-borne diseases. Glenda Etienne Sipal, Environmental Health Officer in the Vector Control Unit, noted that this visit is a continuation of a capacity-building initiative between the Ministry of Health and the Caribbean Public Health Agency. All our vector control officers took part in that exercise last year and today what we're doing is just an evaluation basically assessing the objectives of what happened last year. Um, we have facilita the facilitators from the Caribbean Public Health Agency here with us for two days, today and tomorrow and they're going to be basically shadowing us to, to assess the way that we're doing what we're doing coming from the training that happened last year. Drawing on the findings from various data collection methods employed by the Vector Control Unit, the Environmental Health Officer explained the factors contributing to the noticeable increase in the mosquito population. In St. Lucia, um, we tend to store water because we experience water emergencies and in some communities there is uh, an issue with um, a constant water supply. So I tend to say that in our, it's almost in our culture to, to store water because we don't know when we're not going to get a, a constant supply of water in the pipe. So what we've noticed is that drums are the number one breeding ground for mosquitoes because we tend to store water in the eventuality that we don't have water in the pipe. And the issue is not storing water storage. The issue is how we store the water. If we store the water properly, then the mosquitoes, the mosquitoes would not have um, options for them to lay eggs and we would not have an increase in the mosquito population. Presenting the details of the data collection methods and techniques, ATN CPAL explains that traps are strategically placed in various communities to monitor mosquito activity. She noted that black traps are specifically chosen because mosquitoes are naturally attracted to dark areas, making these traps highly effective in capturing and assessing the local mosquito population. The reason we place traps and not just collect the mosquito adults is because it's easier for us to get eggs. On one single lay, a, mo a female mosquitoes, mosquito sorry, can lay about 300 eggs. However, she would not lay all her eggs in one container. She, to ensure the survivability of her offsprings, she would do what they call OV, skip, pos skip OV position, which is just um, laying some of her eggs in different containers to ensure the survivability. And um, so we go out into the different communities and we set out these traps, sometimes six, as many as 60 traps in a day or in a community or in a in a space depending on how wide or small that community is and uh, we would um, leave it out for about five days collect it and bring it into the lab for, for sorting out testing and to ship out to CAFO with the new the, the training that we received we would remove the need to send to CAFA unless it's for verification. By staying ahead of resistance trends, the Environmental Health Division aims to protect the population from the spread of vector-borne diseases more effectively. The Vector Control Unit expressed its commitment to continuing these evaluations and adapting strategies as needed to address the evolving challenges in vector control. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, I am Onika McCoy.